this was the differential equation for the energy eigenstates phi, supposed to be normalizable functions. We looked at this equation and decided we would first uh, clean out the constant. We did that by replacing x by a unit-free coordinate, u. For that, we needed a constant that carries units of length, and that constant is given by this combination of the constants of the problem, h bar, m, and omega, the frequency of the oscillator. We also define a unit free energy, calligraphic E, which, in terms of which, the real energies are given by multiples of h omega over 2. So the problem has now become, and this whole differential equation turns into this simple differential equation, simple looking, let's say, properly, um, differential equation for phi as a function of u, which is a new rescale coordinate, and where the energy shows up here. And for some reason, this equation doesn't have normalizable solutions unless those energies are peculiar values that allow a normalizable solution to exist. <coughs> we looked at this equation for u going to infinity, and realize that e to the plus minus u, over, u squared over 2 are the possible dependencies. So we said, without loss of generality, that phi could be written as some function of u to be determined times this exponential. And we hope for maybe a function that may be a polynomial, so that uh, the dependence at infinity is governed by this fact. So with this ansatz for the function phi, we substitute back into the differential equation. Now the unknown is h. So you can take the derivatives and find this differential equation for h, a second order differential equation. And that's the equation may look a little uh, more complicated than the equation we started with, but it's much simpler, actually. Um, there would be no polynomial solution of this equation, but there may be a polynomial solution of the second equation. We have to solve this equation now, and the way to do it is to attempt a serious expansion. So we would try to write h of q equal to sum over j equal 0 to infinity a j u to the um, or AK, K, K equals 0 to infinity. Now, one way to proceed with this is to plug this expansion into the differential equation. You will get three sums, you will have to shift uh, indices. It's kind of a little complicated. Um, Actually, there's a simpler way to, to do this in which you think uh, in the following way. Um, you have this series, and you imagine, well, there's a term aj u to the j plus aj plus 1 u to the j plus 1 plus aj plus 2 u to the j plus 2. And you say... <coughs> Let me look at the terms with u to the j in the differential equation. So just look at the terms of, uh, that have a u to the power j. So from the second h, du squared, what do we get? Well, to get a term that has a u to the j, you must start, if you take two derivatives and to end up with u to the j, you must have started with this, u to the j plus 2. So this gives you j plus 2 
j plus 1, taking the two derivatives, a j plus 2, u to the j. From the series, the term with u to the j from the second h du squared is this one. How about for minus 2u dh du? Well, if I start with um, h and differentiate and then multiply by u, I'm going to get u to the j starting from u to the j. Because when I differentiate, I'll get u to the j minus 1, but the u will bring it back. So this time I get minus 2 a j, or minus 2, one derivative j, that's a j, u to the j. So it's from this term, minus 2 and you get that. From the last term, e minus 1 times h, it's clearly e minus 1 times aj u to the j. So these are my three terms that um, we get from the differential equation. So at the end of the day, what have we gotten? We've gotten j plus 2, j plus 1, a j plus 2, minus 2j a j plus e minus 1 a j, all multiplied by u to the j. And that's what we get for u to the j. So if you wish, for the whole differential equation, all of the differential equation, you get the sum from j equals 0 <coughs> to infinity of these things. And that should be equal to 0. So this is the whole left-hand side of the differential equation. We calculated what is the term u to the j, and well, there will be terms uh, from u to the 0 to u to the infinity. So that's the whole thing. And we need this differential equation to be solved, so this must be 0. And whenever you have a function of u, like a polynomial, well, we don't know if it's a polynomial and it stops. But if you have a function of u like this, each coefficient must be 0. Therefore, we have that j plus 2 times j plus 1 times a j plus 2 is equal to 2j plus 1 minus e a j. I set this whole combination inside brackets to 0. So this term is equal to the, this term and that term. On the other side, you get a plus 2j, a plus 1, and minus e. So basically, this is a recursion relation, a j plus 2 is equal to 2j plus 1 minus e over j plus 2, j plus 1, that's a j. And this is uh, perfectly nice. This is what should have happened for this kind of differential equation, a second order linear differential equation, we get a recursion that jumps one step. That's very nice. And this should hold for j equals 0, 1, 2, all numbers. So when you start solving this, there's two ways to solve it. You can decide, OK, let me assume that you know a0. You give it. Give a0. 
Well, from this equation, from A0, you can calculate A2. Then from A2, you can calculate A4. And successively, so you get A2, A4, all those. And this corresponds to an even solution of the differential equation for H, even coefficients, even solution for H. Or, given this recursion, you can also give A1, give it, and then calculate A3, A5, and those would be an odd solution. So you need two conditions to solve this. Um, and those conditions are A0 and A1, which is the same as specifying the value of the function h at 0, because the value of the function h at 0 is A0, and the value of the derivative of the function at 0, which is A1. <coughs> No, h of mu is a0 plus a1u plus a2u squared. So the derivative at 0 is h1. And that's what you must have for solving a differential equation. Second order differential equation for h, you need to know the value of the function at 0 and the value of the function at, um, at the derivative of the function at zero as well, and then you can start integrating it. So uh, this first gives you a solution a0 plus a2 u squared plus a4 uh, u to the fourth, and the second is an a1 u plus a3 u cubed. So all looks pretty much okay. <laughs> 